Today's video is sponsored by Into the What AM. is going on to all my movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Today we are discussing the new George Miller dark fantasy film starring Tilda Swinton and Idris Elba by the name of 3,000 Years of Longing, a film that actually premiered at the Cannes Film Festival earlier this year. I got a chance to see this film a couple days ago. I had to sleep on it, think about it, and I'm here to let you all know what I thought about the film and ultimately, is it worth checking out in theaters? We'll be breaking that down here in this spoiler-free review, but before we get into it, if this is your first time watching one of my videos i want to welcome you all to the community if this is your type of content you enjoy i'm talking movie reviews daily and weekly tv breakdowns and live streams consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell do your boy a favor if you enjoyed the video let's get this video a thumbs up let's do a thumbs up party let's try to get this to 200 plus likes and also it would mean a lot to me if you can, hit that share button. Share this video to anyone and everyone you know that might be interested in seeing this movie. But more importantly, I'm interested in your thoughts on this film. Were you excited for it? And more importantly, once you've seen it, what did you think about it? From the direction, the story, the narrative, the performances, what worked, what didn't work? Let's have those discussions in the comments below. So it's been a few days since I've seen the film and I made my out of theater reaction and you all can check out that video, but I'll just give you a little hint of that video. I said in that video, I don't know if I want to talk about this film much further because of how I felt about it. And we'll get to that a little bit later. But I ultimately decided to make this video because, number one, I'm going to let you all know if I think it's worth checking out. And number two, I want to help you all in preparing yourself if you want to see this film, which ultimately, regardless of my positives or negatives, you should make your own decision. But I'm going to help you all kind of set the expectations of what you're walking into without spoiling the film, obviously. So with all that being said, let's talk about my man, George Miller, who is a rock star in my eyes. He is just a fantastic genius of a director. He co-wrote this film. And of course, again, if you're not familiar with George Miller, I mean, I'm pretty sure you all have heard of the Mad Max franchise. Mad Max Free Road is one of my favorite films of all time. You know, Babe and Happy Feet, a very underrated film of his, which came out in the 80s, um, Witches of Eastwick, which has Jack Nicholson, Cher, and Michelle Pfeiffer, very underrated film of his, but anyway, what I love about George Miller, and what I, what I really enjoyed about him in this movie directing it, he is such a brilliant storyteller with regards to narratively speaking, a lot of his films are told by the visuals, right? Especially when you think of Mad Max Fury Road is, you know, dialogue, but mostly we're moving. We're constantly moving in that film. And this film is much different in the pacing and the tone and all that stuff. But nonetheless, as far as the visuals, the man knows how to put a frame together, especially when he works with someone like the cinematographer in this film, John Seal, who he worked with, with Mad Max Fury Road. The, the the film is like a painting, man. There are some, there's shots in my head now. I think of one in particular with, with our Jen Idris Elba on a rock and there's like a moon coming in and he has a, a lady in his arms and the water sweeping in. There's so many beautiful shots in this movie and the way he, again, frames the shot, the way it has almost like a 300 style Zack Snyder 300 film as far as the style and the aesthetics when we go back into the past and see how the Jin came to be and see how he got entrapped into being a genie the visuals in this film like I, I like I said guys it, it's beautiful this film is gorgeous to look at and again that's thanks to the di strong direction even though I wasn't a fan of the the narrative and again George Miller had his hand in, in co-writing this film but I, I can't deny this felt like a, a passion project and I felt that from the strong direction but also the strong visuals that we got from the film it was very gorgeous to look at but speaking of fantastic and, and, and gorgeous to look at we have two uh, amazing actors Idris Elba being one of them and, and Tilda Swinton being another one of them two of the greatest actors of our generation if you ask me I have to say for my liking I much more preferred Idris Elba in this film that I did Tilda Swinton now reasons being I personally felt that the Jinn, and, and I don't want to give too much away for this film, for those that haven't seen the trailer or even know what this film is, essentially it's about a, a Jinn, a genie, who has been entrapped in a bottle, and as you all would imagine, you got to make wishes for the genie to be free, that's what Tilda Swinton comes in, we're in modern times, she uh, acquires this, this genie, this Jinn, this bottle, he comes out of the bottle, he wants to get out of it, but unfortunately, Tilda Swinton's character, she's not as uh, she's not your normal person. She doesn't want to. She doesn't have desires or needs or wants. So it's it's a it's a conflict with those two characters. Our Jin, our you know, this is essentially <laughs> for Disney fans out there. This is like, what if the genie in Aladdin had a backstory that involved romance and heartbreak and trauma and pain? That's what we got with Idris Elba character, which I wasn't expecting, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but. 
his story, his past, how he came to be, how he was entrapped in this bottle, how many times he's been trapped in this bottle, and going back to those moments to me were the more intriguing elements of this narrative. So I thought that his story was was probably the most invested I was in a narrative. And then match that with Tilda Swin. I don't want to downplay her because she's great in the movie. Them together, not so much. We'll leave that to the chemistry at in the cons. But individually speaking, Tilda Swinton is someone who has a past. She had a relationship that didn't work out, which now results to her being a recluse. And, and not necessarily a recluse. She goes out every now and then. She's a scholar. She loves to obtain knowledge. So she travels across the world to these different conferences. Very intellectual person. But she doesn't have like the desires of someone you would think that comes across a genie like, I want a bazillion dollars. She doesn't have those type of desires or needs. So it, it creates that rift between the two. And you're just seeing them kind of understanding each other and whatnot but I, I enjoyed Tilda but again to me the highlight of this film was Idris Elba as our gin in this movie so visuals were great performances again Idris was the standout for me and, and Tilda was fine those things to me really stood out and again there were certain stories within the gin's past that was very kind of like oh that story is more interesting than this entire film itself so that brings me to my criticisms now I'm going to just talk about me for a second here. I did go into this film and I don't recommend doing this and I don't like doing this often, but every now and then trailers get to me, marketing gets to me. And for my, my sake going into this film, I went in expecting, okay, this is George Miller. He hasn't directed a film in seven years. And the last time he directed the film, it was one of my favorites of all time. Mad Max Fury Road, a lot of energy, a lot of entertainment, constantly moving. The pacing's fantastic. The action, all this stuff is great. You watch the trailer for this film. I was thinking, Obviously, it wasn't going to be Mad Max, so I'm like, oh, this is going to be a dark fantasy, you know, gins and creatures and, and, and lore and mythology and all that different stuff, and yeah, that is not this film. So again, I recommend you all, number one, and I do blame this a little bit on the marketing, if you haven't seen the trailer, stay away from it, don't watch it if you haven't already, watch the film, then watch the trailer, but if you've seen the trailer and if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about here, that trailer is not a good representation of what this film is again the trailer very high obtained from the genius of Mad Max Free Road it's fast paced rock and roll again you got some fight sequences there's a battle in the trailer it's just high obtained action almost a, a fantasy action film that is not this movie ladies and gentlemen again without giving too much away at the foundation of this movie this is a love story i have been a viewer of films where i've seen a trailer i've seen the marketing and in my mind i'm like oh this is going to be this type of film i go into the movie it's not that film and i've walked out like oh i much more prefer what we got than what i thought we were going to get this is the reverse of this film i did not enjoy the narrative in this movie because again i found the chemistry of our two leads to not really be there and also narratively speaking this film is based on short stories and you can feel that it felt so choppy in its delivery because we're going back in time learning about the gen chopping up the chapters then we're tying into Tilda Swinton's character and how they coexist and then they ultimately come to this type of relationship that I just did not buy and and that really is and it sucks because that's the film that's the movie you got to buy into their stories you got to buy into their development into one another and I just wasn't sold into that so unfortunately for me the pacing was so bad in this movie because it's so funny I was talking to the person next to me that saw this screening they looked at their watch like oh this is only an hour and 45 minutes I'm like you're lying the film felt like two and a half hours because it is just very slow and very methodical and there's so much talking and listen I love good dialogue but the dialogue and the, and the conversations being had was just not it wasn't for me. This film just ultimately wasn't for me. It boils down to, fundamentally speaking, the romance, the 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 story, the narrative, the pacing, just and and and, and also Tilda Swinton and, and her story and how she, the decision she makes in the third half. I'm like, I, I didn't really buy it. So it pains me to say the film didn't work for me. But again, I want to warn you all: it is not action. It's not crazy, high obtained George Miller, Mad Max Fury Road vibes. Do not go into this film with those expectations because you will be disappointed like I was. But also, it's a love story. So take that as you will. Do I recommend you all watch it? Before we get into all that, I want to take the time to thank the sponsor in this video, Into the AM. Let's hear from them right quick. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. 
Into the AM is a clothing company with a variety of amazing products such as t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, shorts and underwear, headwear and much more. Their t-shirts have unique designs, they're incredibly soft and extremely comfortable and they're made to last. But the best part is you can get 10% off by using my discount code MOVIEFILES when you're selecting your new gear which you can find that code in the description below. Shout out to Into the AM. You can check out their cool apparel. Use my link in the description of this video to use the discount code to check out their awesome and cool gear. Wrapping this thing up, overall, I didn't like it. I did not like this film. It's not that the film was terrible. I just thought the execution wasn't all that great. And I didn't think that the chemistry was there. I didn't really enjoy the narrative that we got with our characters, especially romantically speaking in this film. And I just thought that there were the little short vignettes that we got in the film from the Jen's backstory, there were like two or three of those stories that I thought was just so much more intriguing than what we ultimately got in the film. With all that being said, visually speaking, performances are there. It's really good soundtrack. It's a very immersive feeling at points. I'm going to give it, based on those things, a 2.9 out of 5. And should you watch it, I think if you really want to see it, maybe wait till it comes out on streaming. If you know what you're getting into, it does have a strong visuals that might be very entertaining and very enjoyable on a big screen. So take that as you will. 2.9 out of 5. Let me know what you all thought of the film once you've seen it. Your pros, your cons, your thoughts, and all that different stuff. What did you all think about the themes and the metaphors and all that stuff? Did it work for you all? Did it not work? Let's talk about it in the comments. Thank you all for watching this video. Before you leave, make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and come and join the community by clicking this button. Check out my other reviews. Check out my most recent breakdown. You all have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next breakdown. Thank you.